Hello everyone, this is Pastor Jason Mills, and I'm very excited and I'm very glad that you all are joining in with us for this morning's message. And so therefore, um, I don't really want to belabor the point too much. I just want to first off express gratitude to all of you. And I also want to express gratitude to Pastor Ramon Hodridge uh, for allowing me this opportunity. All of you down there in Plano, I love you. I miss you. Um, I want to let you know that everything's okay up here in Louisiana. Um, God has been good. Um, he has sustained me throughout the hurricanes, throughout the pandemic. Um, I felt every bit of it, but God is still bigger than all of that. He's bigger than everything that I will ever face in my life. And I just want to thank you all for your prayers and your love, your continued love, even though, um, you know, we're now at a, we're a far distance from one another. But I just want to thank you all for praying for me, for loving on me continuously. And I hope that you still allow me, will allow me to love on you, to pray for you, uh, for Ramon, for everyone uh, who calls Church of Plano home. So I want to thank you all again from the bottom of my heart for your continued love and your support for me and my ministry. And also, I want to uh, give you a quick message that I believe is going to bless your life going into 2021. Uh, given the way that 2020, 2020 ended and how 2021 is starting off, I feel this message is really necessary for everyone. So in Matthew chapter 21, that's where we'll be coming from, Matthew chapter 21, specifically I'm going to deal with 21 primarily, not discounting the uh, the uh, relevance of the other of the other verses, but uh, verse 21 in, Ma in Matthew chapter 21 is exactly where we're going to be coming from. And in that passage of scripture, after Jesus has been hungry, after he has uh, made a fig tree wither away into, into oblivion, the disciples are now wondering, how did Jesus do this? And in verse 21, he answers them and says, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only be able to do what has been done to this fig tree, but you will be able to say to this mountain, this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea. And of course, verse 22 says, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So if I had to give this lesson a title of, for anything, for me, I would call this lesson a message to overthinkers. A message to overthinkers. And understand this. If you second guess God, you will not get anything from him. If you don't get anything else from the lesson today, understand this. If you second guess God, you will not get anything from him because God is not looking to bless people who doesn't think he can give it to him. God has nothing to prove to nobody. We have something to prove to him, but he doesn't have to prove nothing to us. He doesn't have to prove anything to us. But we have something to prove to him. We have something to prove. And that thing we have to prove is our faith. And so understand he says, if you have faith and do not doubt, that right there is the overthinking. A lot of us did that in 2020. In 2021, that's got to be something that I don't even want to call that a resolution. That's something we just got to work on. Because when we, pray, when we overthink God, we basically say, God, maybe you can't. Maybe you're not able. Maybe you're not that good. Maybe you're just not, you know what, you know, I've read about. Maybe you're not the same God that... I've heard about. That's what we do when we overthink. That's the message we send back to God with doubting. Doubting is overthinking. Doubting is second guessing. Doubting um, is sinful when it comes to what we believe in God. Those of us who have seen it before. Those of us who know about it, okay? So if we're going to call ourselves Christians, if we're going to call ourselves believers, that's something that we have to take away because he says, if you have faith and do not doubt, it can't really be faith if there's doubt. He says, you know, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, we're going to have nothing. Without faith, God is not even real to in our lives. We don't feel that realness of him because we doubt him. But he's the realest thing ever. He made the impossible happen right there. They're like, have y'all ever really just looked at people? I'm talking about people who just are, are no good. Some people who are good, but you know, you look at them and say, how did you get here? How did you get all these blessings? How did you get these riches? How did you get, you know, all these things that I've prayed for in my own life? How did you get there? Because it's mind blowing. It's almost, we would almost marvel at it the way the disciples did in verse, uh, in verse number 20. 
you would just marvel at it and say, how did this happen? How did It all starts with faith. If you don't believe, you will never achieve. You don't believe that God can, God never will. Get that through your mind now. I don't care what it is. I don't care how far-fetched it is. I don't care how big it is that you've prayed for. God is bigger than what you pray for. It says it in scripture. It says like, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. He's that big of a God. He's that powerful of a God. We just have to be the ones to believe him because the problem that we have as human beings is that we sometimes think that God is like us. That's why we won't go to worship with certain people who've messed up so bad because we're thinking, oh, this person that did this and did that. Uh-uh. How dare you even think you can come in here and sit next to me, you sinner, you. You person who did this and did that because we think that certain sins are worse than the next. God doesn't. That's a us thing. We'll see somebody who committed a sin we don't think they should have ever committed, but yet... We are the ones who judge other people because that's not something we say we would do. Now, mind you, that's what we say we would never do. I said I wouldn't do a lot of things that I've done now. I said I would never have done this or done that, but I've done it. So I'm not better than anybody. But see, that's me. That's a human carnal uh, response to sin. Judgment. You know, arrogance, if you will, because, you know, if you can't go to church and sit next to and love on, let's say, a rapist, that's because you think you're better than them. You're like, I've never raped anybody. I never would. This, that, and the third. Yeah, but you would do other things. There's a lot of other things you would have done, a lot of other things you have done. But that's, that's an example of how we think that God will act like us. He doesn't act like us. Okay? He's not like you. Okay, God knows his power. God knows his own strength. He knows everything. You know, and um, you know, I, I went to uh, I went to the gym today, and I was working out with some guys who were trying to play basketball um, at the next level. And one thing that they always believe in, especially as you play sports, a big thing is muscle memory. You know your own strength. You know your own tendencies. And like, it's almost like taking a jump shot. If you second guess a jump shot, you're never going to make one. You're never going to make a jump shot. You're never going to score any points. You're never going to do anything because you always second guess it. But if you know how much, how hard you've trained, if you know how hard you've practiced, how many times you've practiced, you've seen the ball go in before when you take a jump shot, you know the ball's going to go in. You've seen God do the impossible before in your own life. You've seen God bless you when you don't deserve it. Keep that in mind. God has blessed us when we don't deserve it. He has done for us when we are not deserving of anything good, but yet he's still good to us. If you have faith and do not doubt, you can do the impossible. You can have the impossible. You can do something great. As a matter of fact, and not only that, you'll be able to say to your mountain, Keep in mind, this is a mountain because what you saw God do that first time, that last time, that was light. Making the fig tree wither away, that's light. It requires faith, but that's light. That's fig tree size faith. You know, that's light. And mind you, fig trees can grow from a small little plant to a big tree. Fig trees can grow that big. But the problem is, we don't just face fig trees in life. We face mountains. And he says, you'll be able to say to this mountain, this obstacle, if you will. You know, that's what a mountain can represent. It can represent an obstacle that you have to get over. It can represent something that you want. But right now, the mountain has you because all you see is something big that I can't get over. So wide, I can't get around it. He says, you'll be able to say to this mountain, you know what? That you need to scale, that you need to get past this impossible task that you have to get over, this hump you have to get over, whatever it is that you need in your life that you just can't get to, because there's, there's a mountain in front of it. God says, if you have faith and do not doubt, you can not only handle the fig tree, you know, handle the light stuff, but when you have the big stuff come in front of you, you'll be able to just move it without even touching it. 
See, that's a whole next level faith that a lot of us ain't ready for. See, it's one thing to sit up here and say, oh, well, you know, I can, you know, move a mountain, use my physical strength to do. You don't even have to touch it. You don't even have to touch it. You can just have faith enough to where God's going to actually allow it to be moved. You don't have to scale it. You don't have to go around it. You can just walk that same path that he has you on. And the obstacles will disappear. If you have faith and you'll see the obstacle, but you'll say, mm -mm, move to the left, to the left, because everything I want is behind you. And not only that, in verse 22, he says, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have that kind of faith, the faith that doesn't doubt. Because the faith that doubt, the faith that doubt is like fake love. It's a love that gives only if it's given to. It's a love that will dissipate after something treacherous has happened. It's a love that will not last. It's a love that is easily defeated. That's not the type of faith you need to have going into 2021. We're in 2021. If you've had that faith going into 2021, now it's time to graduate. It's time to graduate to something greater. Because if you want greater, you have to start believing that God can give you greater. Whatever it is that you stand in need of, God will give it to you. He will give it to you. But you got to believe that he can. Don't second guess it. Don't think, well, maybe that's too big. Well, maybe I haven't been the best Christian for to desert. Stop that. Whatever you got in your mind, what, if, even if you're looking at this message right now, when you're overthinking some things right now, stop it. Stop it. God knows what you've done wrong, okay? He knows what you've done wrong. And even in the midst of what you've done wrong, God is loving enough to still bless your life in spite of you. That's called grace. They love saying we're saved by grace through faith. But that faith has got to be so strong and so powerful to where your blessings won't miss you. Because God's blessings are coming down like raindrops. But all that doubt, all that second guessing has you moving in directions as where you're going to miss what God is trying to bring you. I would equate it almost to like a plane trying to land. There's so much doubt on the runway. There's so much clamor of fear, anxiety about things that don't even matter in the grand scheme of things to where the plane that's carrying your blessings, that's carrying everything you've asked for. And mind you, this is just one plane. We're not even talking about all the planes that are coming into your runway. But there is a plane full of blessings that God has sent just for you that you prayed for. But there's so much doubt clouding your runway that the plane can't land. It's time to clear the runway. It's time to clear the runway. It's time to stop overthinking. It's time to stop doubting. Because you serve a God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask and all that you think Okay, if there's any time you should never overthink, it's when you ask God for something. I don't know what you stand in need of today. I don't know what it is that you really need in your life. I don't know what it is that you've been praying for that you've been waiting on. But I promise you, you're going to wait a lot longer if you don't get that doubt out the way. Get that doubt off the runway so that God can bring your blessings to you. Get that doubt off the runway so that you can take flight in your walk with Christ. Because that doubt messes everything up. Some of y'all who wanted relationships, some of y'all who wanted jobs, you lost them because you overthought it. You were overthinking. There's so many things that you wanted. There's people that you ran off because you're, you were overthinking. There are so many opportunities that have been missed by people because we overthink. If you have faith in God, not only will you say to a mountain, move. Not only will you say to a, a fig tree, wither away at once because you don't have what I need. I would even use another analogy and say you'll be able to dive in head first because that's what faith is all about. Diving in head first and trusting that God doesn't have any rocks underneath the water that will kill you. But he's prepared the way. That's my message to all my overthinkers out there. That overthinking is keeping you stuck. It's keeping all your blessings away. And it's up to you to clear the runway. It's up to you 
to move that mountain so that God can send you your blessings. I don't know what you stand in need of today. Whatever it is, I ask you that you have the faith to give it to God and don't doubt him for a second that he can deliver. That's my message for all of you. Whatever you stand in need of, ask for it. Ask for it. Because we serve a God who's loving enough and good enough and powerful enough to deliver everything in due season. That's my message for all of you today. May God bless you and God keep you until we meet again.